when when senator blumenthal was in larissa's room just being in the room and with so many others of us who were also there the fact that the students were still able to concentrate on the lesson of the moment and the lesson of the day said a great deal and i don't believe that she prepped them ahead of time and said to them stay focused in spite of the fact that there are going to be seven eight individuals seven eight adults in the room the kids were focused because that's kind of what they do they are they are eager to look around but at the same time they were paying attention because the lesson was engaging and i think what was so wonderful about that is how um senator blumenthal actually engaged with the kids about what they were studying and at that particular moment they were studying copyright laws and what was fabulous about that was the fact that Larissa did that day with that lesson what she has been doing a great deal of over these past two years. Ever since she learned about the six developmental pathways and the importance of connecting development to everything she's doing in the room, she somehow in this creative way find wonderful ways of connecting the pathways to every part of her lesson. And so that particular day when we went in, she had a, a, a whiteboard just writing on this board, the six pathways connecting them to the concept of copyright laws. And at that particular moment, they were talking about the ethical pathway. And Senator Blumenthal actually asked the students, what are you learning right now? And a couple of the students just enthusiastically told him, we're learning about copyright laws. And he said, tell me one thing that you learned. And this young man said, well, I learned that you just can't take somebody else's work and put your name on it and call it yours. It's not right. And then he said, it's unethical. It's, it's, you know, you can't do that. You violate the ethical pathway. So, so that, that was just wonderful. The fact that th that child connected it. Um, Senator Blumenthal asked the right question and just got a brilliant response from the young man. And then at that particular point, when Larissa was able to transition from working with the students and then um, Sheila Brantley took over with the students, which was just a terrific uh, way of collaborating without even saying it verbally, outrightly. Sheila just knew this was important for her to, ta um, to transition and be the person to take care of the kids, while Larissa turned to the board. In Larissa's classroom, there is a board to the right when you walk in the room that has all of the six pathways mounted beautifully in big words. And then they have the definition under each of the pathways, but then more importantly, they have stu she has students' work attached to every pathway. So the students wrote long essays about themselves along each of those six pathways. And that's an, an extension to what she actually has the kids doing in their journals. It's one of the most beautiful ways that I think a teacher has captured the essence of the six developmental pathways in the classroom by having the students journal once per week or sometimes twice per week about themselves in the path in in the journals their pathways journal is what she calls them and the thing that i think i am most impressed with about the pathways journal is the page in the journal that she calls the please help me page where the students are encouraged to write about any challenge that they're having where they need the teacher's help. So the please help me is the student's plea to the teacher. Here is a situation that I'm dealing with. I'm having a challenge here. And they identify the challenge, but they identify it under a particular pathway. And then they would say to the teacher, I need your help with this. And so Larissa started this out as an opportunity to have the kids write to her and she would respond to them in writing. But then there were a few of those challenges that were coming up that when she would read them at lunchtime, she realized that they needed immediate response. And so at the beginning of lunchtime, she would read a few of those journals. And if she saw that some of those students had a particular challenge, would invite them to have lunch with her so that she could discuss the situation immediately. That made a big difference for her and the students. In terms of behavior, 
but also in terms of just the climate of the classroom. You talk about a wonderful way of managing classroom behaviors, but building relationships between students and teachers where the students know she cares about us. My teacher cares about us. So I can say, I need help. And she's not judging me. She's not coming across as this judgmental person that's going to hammer me and say, how could you or what's wrong with you? She's going to say, Faye, I noticed that you need some help here. Here is what's going on. And talk the kid through or provide whatever the help is. That's something that she has done that I, I haven't seen it elsewhere. And the good thing is, she is now, um, because she has developed that strategy, she's now helping other teachers in other schools, not just there at Nathan Hale. But I have her now working with me in some other schools where she's sharing some of her strategies with other classroom teachers who are just loving these strategies. That's a wonderful addition to what we're doing in New Haven.